This episode of Computer Club Lesson was recorded on November the 30th, 2015. Enjoy! Hello, welcome to Computer Club Lesson. This episode is brought to you by the Binary Guys. Okay, folk, the hour has arrived, and so we should begin. The first thing that I was uh, greeted with when I walked in here was Bill with a question, <laughs> or a dozen questions. No, just one. Okay, a dozen <laughs> questions. Let's go. I'm afraid to ask it now. <laughs> Let's go. I got a message today. The weight operation timed out. What is that? The weight operation. What, what were you doing? Nothing stupid. <laughs> uh, let's find out. Well, what, what exactly, what operation were you trying to do? Were you trying to load a program or uh, nope. wait for the program to uh, do something for you? I think I was just trying to shut down. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, if you're just trying to shut down your computer, um, what happens is that uh, when your computer wants to shut down or you tell it to, um, it has a look and sees what's running. Okay, so if you've got a web page running or you've got uh, a chat room running or, uh, or, whatever, or uh, an office program running, it looks at those and says, can I shut them down um, by myself. In other words, can I go in, inside the program and shut that program down and then the next one and the next one. Um, at some point or other, it may come across a program that it can't shut down by itself. And so it sits there and it waits. And it waits. And it waits. It's waiting uh, and it will give you a message. Uh, it will um, pop a message up on your shutdown screen saying uh, uh, task manager can't shut down or uh, task manager is waiting. That's where you came in. Task manager is waiting. Waiting for what? Waiting for an action from you to say okay force shutdown. Which is what you do when the, the button will come up that says force. Okay, It's asking you to force a shutdown. Um, in the grand scheme of computer programming, forcing a computer to do anything is a bad thing. It's not necessarily true, but in programming, it is. It's a bad thing if you force it to do something. So when that force button turns up, it's asking you to, do you really want to do this? I don't recommend it. Do you really want to do this? And go ahead and say, force the damn thing to shut down. Okay, just force it. So it's like giving it a kick in the slats. So you just turn it off then? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and the force will continue the shutdown in an orderly way. Okay, unless it gets really, really hung up and it sits there for an hour, then you have to turn it off with the power button. Okay. But uh, it's, it's, in your case, it, it just waited too long and it gave you that information. It should have kept on going with the shutdown, did it? Oh, I got that message and that was it. And it shut the computer off after that? No, it just no, sits there. I had to do it. Oh, okay. You had to do, it was waiting for you to do something. I guess so, right? Yeah. Okay, that's, yeah, uh, that's, uh, that's something in Windows 10. Uh, a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of messages um, that you never saw before in Windows 7 will start appearing in Windows 10. Um, that's Microsoft trying to be helpful to say, okay, um, you've been playing with a computer long enough now that you should know that there are certain things that have to happen in certain orders. That's Microsoft trying to be helpful. And it will give you messages about, you're not doing this in the right order. Well, the hell with them. Do it the order that you want, okay? Do it in the order you want. Um, like I said, this is this is has to do with 
how a computer is programmed to work. So if it's if you force it to do something, it's going to complain. And that's all that was. It's just complaining, being stubborn. But if you hit the wrong button, it may very well lose its mind. Okay, that's fine. Hard shut down and start again. Okay, any other questions? Yes, ma'am. Carry over from last week. Yes. I want to know how you set up button to send all the messages to my members in the club. Okay. Um, I believe I don't have um, what email package are you using? Hotmail. You're using Hotmail, so you're using Outlook. Um, let's see if I can get into Outlook.com. And it's going to log me in. There we go. Now, I don't have any um, messages or anything. This is just, this is just a, a, um, an email account the computer wanted me to set up. So it's set up. Big deal. Um, now what we're, what we're going to look at is uh, um, the people. Okay, so you, you're going to click on people. Where did you get all those pictures from? <laughs> yeah, in the program up here, it's, oh, this okay. is telling you in this square right here that there are more there are more options in behind all those little squares. Okay, so we click on that and we click on people. It's not going to be in your Vista. Um, if it's if you're using Outlook.com, it's there. It's there. Thank you. Okay, because Outlook.com is just simply a web page. That's all it is. You're using web mail. Um, now, let me just try something here. So I have clicked on three people here, and I should be able to uh, send an email by going over here to send email to all three of these people, okay? Because I have highlighted them with a. Yes, that's where we're going to go next. Um, on new. Uh, bah, bah, no, that ain't it. Manage. No, that's all importing. I do not see a place here where you can make a list. Can not tell in you Outlook. How I do it? Yeah. Hmm? Can I tell you how I do it? Yes, you tell me how you do it in Outlook.com. Yeah, in Outlook.com because that's what I have. Yeah. When I say I wanted to send an email to everybody here, yeah. I write out the email, whatever, then I click on BCC. Yeah. And then I click press A and it opens up everybody in who's A and I click on their name and it goes to yeah. BCC. Then I click on B if there's anybody B and then and yeah. Mark what? Uh, yeah, that works. Yeah, that that works. What we're looking for here is a way to do it from from a from a uh, from from a pre-installed list. Okay. So you have all of your names, as as I have all of the names of the computer club, in a list. It's in the main listing of all of the email addresses I have, but it's also in a list that I created of just those 30 people. Okay. Well, I, I can do that in 
uh, in a, um, a local program like Windows Live Mail, I can do it in. Okay, but I don't see a way to do it on Outlook.com. Can you select all? Uh, well, yes, you can. Oops. Yeah. And source mail, I, I, I don't honestly know what I'm using. I just go to my email and I've got a... Yeah, you're, you're not sure whether you're using a local email client or whether you're on the web. I mean, I, I've got a list of people, right? Yeah. And I can take 10 people out of that list and give them a name. And, oh, yeah, you can take Or a right. number yeah. or something. Yeah, I don't want to do that. And, and what he says. To get a one. Yeah. Um, there is not a way, it appears, in Outlook.com to make a list. You'd have to have the, the list pre written in front of you and just go through all of your contacts and do it that way. Um, like 60 names. Yeah, like 60 names. <laughs> Um, no, I cannot see how to do it here. If you went back to the tiles, would it have an option there? <coughs> um, no, it does not. It just brings me right back here to the Outlook people preview. Uh, I know exactly what you're trying to do, and it doesn't appear that you can do it here. Um, what you can do is you can use, uh, now, uh, your, your email address is what? Like my name. Yeah, what's your email address? Chaplins at hotmail.com. Okay, you can use uh, Windows Live Mail um, to um, as a local client um, now this is a local program that I've brought up here this is Windows Live Mail and you can set up Windows Live Mail with your Hotmail address and your password and it will set up right away there is no fiddling with it. It will set up right away. And then um, the only thing that you need to do after that is to find a way to download your contacts locally to your computer. But there is a way to do that. Um, um, there are plenty of videos on the internet to tell you how to do that. Download your contacts from Outlook.com um, and uh, get them into Windows Live Mail. But that's how it's done. Um, when you, uh, it has a, a contacts page here. Uh, let me just quickly show you um, how to get uh, a mail set up here. Uh, bum, 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 bum. Okay, accounts, email, and that's all you have to do is start filling this stuff in. Uh, your email address, your password, tell it to remember and display the name that you want to use, in other words, your name. And if, you, if it's a Hotmail account, it will do it all by itself. There is no fiddling with it. At least Microsoft made that part easy. When I set mine up um, on my uh, office computer for Gmail, I fiddled with it for hours. To make it work. But this, you put in your Hotmail account name and boom, you're, you get the names you're, well, now um, from there, uh, I'm going to show you how to get to um, 
if you have all of your contacts on webmail as I do in Gmail all of my contacts are there loading up loading up loading up there we go and so I am going to click on contacts and it will load up all of my contacts preview all it should do that and here in Gmail I can make groups I can make groups but I can't make them in Outlook.com sorry um, okay Uh, there is a setting in Gmail to export your contacts. Okay, so once you've done that, it will just simply walk you through the process. It will ask you to do a couple of specific things, but it's very clear what it wants you to wants you to do. Um, go to your old contacts. this is the old form of them and it wants you to um, highlight them all and then it wants you to export them and when I click on that it's going to say I have 120 odd contacts here um, I'm going to uh, select all the con uh, all contacts and I'm going to put them into a CF, CSV format. When I click on export, it will ask me where do I want them. It'll, it'll go to the downloads folder because I'm downloading from the internet. That was relatively simple. And it's relatively simple to do this from Outlook.com. Um, you, can look for, uh, you can look for a video from YouTube uh, just simply looking for uh, download outlook.com contacts and it will give you a video and it may uh, if you look around it may even give you a page on exactly how to do it step by step by step by step but there will be step by step videos there so on how to do it on YouTube, what do you, what do you, what do you write in on? well you're, you're going to ask for something um, yeah, you're going to ask for something like, um, in YouTube, um, um, download Outlook.com contact, and we'll search for that. And how to export contacts, Outlook contacts to um, Gmail. It would be the same thing. Import contacts to Outlook.com. So it's in there somewhere. Export contacts from 2010. It's in there somewhere. Um, you might have to go through a few of them, but it's in there somewhere. It's in there somewhere. Um, we're not going to spend a lot of time fiddling with it right now. Uh, but it can be done. Um, in my estimation, um, using, um, using the web services for mail is a lot better than trying to do it um, with local clients on your computer. If you have a web service mail like Outlook, like Gmail, like Yahoo Mail, keep on using it. Get better at it. Uh, the reason I say that is twofold. First off, you'll never lose anything. If your computer punches out 
and there's nothing left of it, and I can't recover it, you've always got your mail. It's up there. It's on the cloud. Okay? You don't lose anything. If somebody sends you an important picture, it's in your mail. Okay? If you've put it in a folder, say, I like this, hold it here, it's there forever. Okay? So, losing your computer to damage or loss or theft or whatever, you have that important stuff. The second reason to do it is that you always have it. If you go to Britain or you go to Florida, okay, you don't have to take your computer. You can borrow one from somebody where you are and check your email on that computer. It's on the cloud. Just log in to your, with your credentials and there you are. You have your stuff and you can send mail and receive mail and show your friends the pictures that you have if you, if you want to save them there, all of that stuff. Using cloud services, and that's what we're talking about, is the better idea nowadays in, the, in this little more modern era than trying to do everything locally on your computer. Okay, These things now are so delicate it doesn't take much to damage one beyond repair. Is that automatically on the cloud? Your uh, email? If you set up a cloud service like Gmail, it's all there. If you set up a cloud service like Yahoo Mail, it's all there. Outlook. And there are a few others. Is Outlook too as well? Yes, Outlook.com is really uh, the new format for your old Hotmail address. Okay, you can get an Outlook.com address, George Bags at Outlook.com, and you can keep your old Hotmail address, George Bags at Hotmail.com, and they both work. Um, if you had a simpatico email address, when you go away from Bell, it's going to go away. Okay, so you've got to find another email address besides Sympatico because if you leave Bell, you're leaving your email address behind. You may have had it for 20 years. They don't care. You're no longer with the service, gone. Well, if your address is still Hotmail, is it If your address is still Hotmail, it's fine. But if it's Sympatico, now here's where things get a little confusing. Years ago, years and years ago, um, Microsoft um, made an alliance with Bell. Anybody remember that? And they called, instead of calling their services msn.com, they called their, their services in Canada MSN Simpatico. Dot com. And if you set up that service, if you like that service, msnsympatico.com, you got a Sympatico email address. But the alliance fell apart after about six or seven years. Uh, Microsoft wanted Bell to do things that were just not in Bell's best interest, so they said, okay, fine, go away. But they kept the, the simpatico <coughs> excuse me, email, email services and made them all um, post office protocol, not IMAP protocol. And so they took over simpatico as an email service and said, it's ours now. And if you leave Bell, you're leaving simpatico. But that wasn't true 10 years ago. That wasn't true. If you could leave Bell and keep your simpatico email address. Not now. All gone. Seems going to be true. For source. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, source is a is a private email server address. Okay. It's there's nothing in the cloud about it except for the fact that you can log into it from a web page. Okay. But it's not a public email service. It's a private email service. But it's going. It's going. Yeah. What's yeah. Gonna it, be Rogers. Rogers. Yeah, Rogers. 
But we'll still have the same. No, you're going to have to change your email address. You're going to have to change your email address. Now, um, I don't know when all this is going to happen. I don't know when all this is going to happen. Yeah, uh, but here's what in all likelihood is going to happen. Now, they, they could turn around and, and, but I doubt it. They could turn around and say, okay, we will just keep the source email address servers going as is, and you will keep your source email address as long as you're with Rogers. That is unlikely. That's unlikely. They will probably, um, what they will probably do is migrate you all over to a Rogers email address, georgebags at rogers.com. Once that happens, your source email address will go away. I would say at that time, at that time, it is, or even a couple of weeks beforehand, set up a web mail service that you're going to use forever. Because relying on these local companies for email services is becoming very problematic. When I started with, uh, with Mountain Cable, way, way back when, I was one of their first subscribers to high-speed data in my area, um, I got a Mountain Cable email address. Well, that went away, and then it became who, Shaw? Yeah. Then it became Shaw, and Shaw went away, and Rogers it's Rogers now, and I, you know, I vowed I would never go back to Rogers again. <laughs> if I'd swing for it, um, but I wouldn't go. Um, so, in all of that time, I have set up um, online email services that will never go away because they're not local. They're out there for the world. Okay, and I got my little chunk. By the way, Gmail is not a little chunk anymore. I've had it for slow, so long that I have like five gigs of storage. Okay, that's a lot, and I'm only using about 10% of it for mail. And I keep everything. <laughs> I keep everything. Um, so those are your, going to be your options for mail going forward. Um, start giving it some thought now, folk, about what do you want for, for a, an email address that can be permanent? Um, if, um, now like James, James is 20 years old and he should be able to keep his email address as long as there is a Google, which we're looking at maybe if nothing goes wrong, uh, it's a company that may last decades and decades and decades without something going bad. So that's good. James has got his email address that will last his lifetime. Um, that's forward thinking. You can't do that with a local company because anything can change. They can go bankrupt, they can sell out, they can just say, okay, we're, we're done in this business, uh, we're going to become a drugstore. Hotmail is owned by, by Microsoft, all right? Um, I think in all probability they, they did away or they started to move away from offering a Hotmail address because the Hotmail addresses were becoming so cumbersome. There are so many of them and they were becoming so cumbersome. People used to to make a Hotmail address five a day, okay, just for something to do. They took up all the names. Now, after a year, Microsoft would look at all those names and say, "Have they? has one email gone through them? If not, they would make it go away. Oh, that's a good thing to do, but the names still became cumbersome. So uh, they added an, another service to it called Outlook, which ties in very nicely with their office suite services of Outlook Mail. That's why they decided to go with that name. It's, it's more closely aligning their office suite services with email. But my Outlook will be there as a 
Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. yeah. yeah. It'll be there forever. Yes, God bless the 10 year old who thought ahead for you. Yep. Okay, uh, I think we've pretty much beaten up e email, if, unless you have any more questions about it. There's still the, the Outlook on the app. Did you have a chance to peek at it or no? The Outlook on the app. Oh. On the start menu. Oh, okay. You mean this mail? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, now I set it up. Um, to uh, look at my Gmail account, that's all it does. It doesn't do anything else. <laughs> okay. Now, now I've got Outlook.com. Yeah. Okay. So I use that one and I use Windows Live. That's two locals, right? Well, that remember that um, this, email, um, this email app here is looking at your Outlook.com email address. Okay, that's IMAP. That's on the cloud. So, so no matter where you are in the world, if you make a change, you, you delete an email, you add a folder, whatever you do, instantly, instantly, it propagates through all of the other programs that you have that look at your Outlook.com email account. So, even locally, okay, as soon as you fire up your local Windows Live Mail and it connects to Outlook.com, all of the changes are done. As soon as, you, as soon as you connect, this is the IMAP process. In Pop Mail, that's not, that's not the case. So that's another reason to use um, services on the internet for mail because they are what's called this IMAP process. Um, in other words, the applications look at the email server constantly, in real time. If you make a change here, it shows up there. Instantly. It doesn't have to go and synchronize. It's, it's doing it by itself. Um, well, this 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 is a local program looking at the internet. Right. Okay, that's all it is. And if you log in through a web page, it's the same thing. Same it's a local thing. program looking at the internet. Oh, okay. So even if I put it in Edge, it's still going to be the same. Yes. Yeah. No. But this is just a quick way to do it. Now, uh, for a quick look at your email, if you don't want to bring it up, but there's not much else you can do with it. You can't. You can look at your calendar items. You can, but as far as uh, looking at um, making a new email, uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't have your contacts in it unless you're going in through people. Okay. Now, there is a way to lock it in through people, but I don't know how to do it. I tried it once. I spent 25 minutes just looking at it, and I decided it's not worth my time. I'm bored. <laughs> so I stopped. No. No. Why would we want to use Windows Live? Windows Live Mail um, is um, it's a good alternative. Oops. Windows Live Mail is a good alternative to other local programs that you could use. It is very nicely tied to the Microsoft services because Microsoft wrote it. So it's nicely tied to it. As opposed to another email package that I like and I recommend over Windows Live Mail in most cases, which is Thunderbird Mail. And that's from Mozilla. That's, uh, that's from the Firefox people. Okay. Uh, I find that um, the Mozilla product, Thunderbird Mail, is much more stable. It's much more stable than these. Um, there's not much goes wrong with it. And if it does go wrong, it's easy to fix. But we're dealing in the Microsoft world, so here we are. Um, the best thing about uh, Windows Live Mail is that without, without too much trouble, 
it can talk to all the Microsoft services, uh, like your calendars, if you have news groups, um, if you have contacts in other places that can find them um, through Microsoft services. So that's one way to look at it. Um, you set it up the same as you do other email accounts? Yes, you set it up the same way. Um, you're going to go and um, um, see it's even telling you when you go to set it up that I like to use Hotmail and Gmail. I like them. It doesn't, unless the email service that you have, what you have right now is relatively simple. It's using the uh, post office protocols as they were intended of um, of the port numbers being 110 and 25 okay so when it's when you you can tell this uh, from source from source because source is using port numbers 110 and 25 uh, your email name your password who you want to be known by okay and it will go ahead and try and set up it's really easy to do it will set itself up because it's using the simple post office protocol the more complex protocols that are set up for um, email services that are encrypted are not using this, these ports 110 and 25, they're using 993 and 457, which are encrypted ports. That takes a little setting up, and this doesn't do it very well. This, this email setup for Windows Live Mail does not do it very well. Now, Thunderbird does. Thunderbird knows about all of these. They keep it up to date. So if you tell it, um, I would like to use um, an email service that has uh, secure socket layers and Thunderbird knows about it, it will set them up all by itself. You just give it your email name, your address, you're done. If my mail email is encrypted, and the receiver have to be encrypted as well? Uh, it is to some degree already. Now let me just see if I can look at this again. I'm going to look at it through Gmail because that's through the eyes of Gmail because the, it is an encrypted service the way it is. And you know that it is encrypted in this web page by this very first in the address bar, HTTPS, Hypertext Protocol Secure. Or I should say Hypertext Transfer Protocol Secure. If the S wasn't there, it would be sending stuff in the clear. Just like um, a simple pop email does. It sends everything in the clear. Then nothing is scrambled. And so, if you send an email to one of your friends who uses PopMail, if you, use, if you send them a Gmail from a Gmail account to a PopMail account, they can open it and read it. Now, how did that happen? Because you sent a secure email. Well, how did that happen? How did it become insecure? The truth is that it did not. It did not become insecure. It was, it's secure all the way to its final destination email server. Secure all the way. All of these email servers that are passing messages along look at this uh, transfer protocol as being secure and they keep the encryption all the way to the end, and it's called end-to-end -end encryption. The last little bit from source to your house is not. But everything in between is. Now, um, I used to like to say, and I still do say, that there is not an email server on the planet that has not been compromised in one way or another. It's just the nature of what email is. It has to work this way. It has to. Or else 
everybody that's got an email address, their email won't work. Change one little thing and nothing works. So they have come up with this uh, protocol to secure email end to end from a secure service like Gmail to an insecure service like source. It's all secure until it gets to the source server. From there, if source doesn't want to secure it, that's their business and you need to talk to them. But in all probability, they're not going to. It costs a lot of money. It costs a lot of money to secure email. So that's, um, that's the whys and wherefores of email services. Um, if any of this is confusing to you, um, don't worry about it. All you need to know is that it works. I, I'm here to explain to you why it works if you would like to know. But, but in this service anyway, all I'm saying is what you need to know is if you're using these web services, you can do it in safety. In safety, you can do it. Um, because the, all of these transmissions of email are a secure service now. There isn't one that isn't. Um, except if you use source directly, uh, George bags at source send, it sends everything out in the clear, including your password. Okay? But um, that's part of why I get phone calls all the time from clients saying, I think, my, I think my email account has been compromised because my friends just got a lot of spam from me. They, they've been on the phone for hours saying spam is coming, spam is coming. And I say, I say to them, no, your email account has not been compromised. Your name has, but not your account. It is trivial to hide an email name and give it another one. You'll notice that when I send you stuff for the computer club, it's coming from computer club. It's not coming from me. Okay. Making that change is trivial. And I can do it with any email name I want. I did it with my own name, Bob Williams. I changed my name to computer club so that when you get my mail, you know who it's from and what it's for. That's trivial. But that's how an email server works. Making that change is not something that uh, the email service is going to stop. It's trivial. It's part of the service itself. So in all probability your email package, client, um, service, Gmail, Yahoo, whatever, has not been compromised. Only your name. Only your name. Now, where did these people get the address? Here again. Email server on the planet. There isn't one that hasn't been compromised in one way or another. Um, and the list of names that you hold in Gmail or Yahoo um, as contacts of yours are in a big database of every contact that Gmail has. And they are just flagged with your name. So, so that when you open uh, your email contacts, only your contacts show up. But they are being dragged in from a very, very large database with all of the email names and a little tag next to that name saying it's yours. And yours. And yours. But all of the names were compromised. All of them. Every name on that email server was compromised. Somebody downloaded it and they are sending spam to it. 
through their very own email server. There's no way to stop it. None. It's just the way email works. It has to work that way or it won't work. Um, that's what the engineers keep telling us. I've got to believe them. Okay, any other concerns about email? No? You mentioned that um, Bell's going to get, if I got a friend, she's moving, that friend of mine in Linda moves. Yeah. And she uses Simpatico. Yep. And she's going to get a cable. So, how will she get to save everything that she's got on Simpatico? Can she set up a new email and send it to herself? Um, what she needs to do is download all of her contacts. Yeah. If she's using Simpat or if she's using Outlook. Yeah. That, and she's using a local email client like Windows Live Mail or Outlook or something like that. She may be using Windows Live Mail. Okay. If, if she's using a local client, then all of her contacts will remain the same. It's just that her simpatico email address will stop working. At that point, um, you you disable it, but you don't you don't delete it. If you delete it, you might delete the contacts, or you're going to delete all of the mail that came with it. Okay, so if you want to keep all that old mail, you don't delete the email, um, the the simpatico email account. You just disable it, so that it's not going to the internet saying download mail that's not there, and you get errors. You just disable it so it doesn't work. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Just as long as she does not delete the account. If she deletes the account in some email, um, in some e email packages, it deletes all the email you had. Okay. So what she should do then is tell everybody to start using a Yahoo address. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's the way to do that. Um, Things are going to get really, really interesting between now and uh, probably next May as far as all of this goes. And, and uh, I'm not here in the village, so I'm not in the loop. Only Fred is pretty much in the loop on this because he's making himself available to it. Um, and so how it's going to work from, from here, uh, nobody is really sure. I had to set up uh, for... Yeah, I had to set up for uh, for a lady um, a while ago, um, and it turned out that even then, uh, I knew Rogers was in the property here making their changes. Uh, Rogers and the contractors for Rogers were in here making the changes, upgrading the, 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 the internet nodes and all of that stuff. I knew that they were here doing it. Um, and so I called Rogers to, to get this lady some help. Um, and they told me, well, we don't know anything about it. You're not in a Rogers service area. You know, I told them within 50 feet where she lived, and she, you're not in a Rogers service area. And I said, well, uh, a Rogers guy was just in her house like three hours ago doing stuff for her. And you're telling me you don't know anything about it? Give yourselves a shake. This is not right. Okay? So things are going to get really interesting between now and May. If they can't uh, right off the bat tell you that, well, yeah, we're in charge now. Uh, who's in charge? <laughs> um, We'll do our best to keep them on the straight and narrow. Now, um, well, I was away for a long time. I came back, of course, I wasn't on the packets any longer. Yeah. My kids took me off. Now, when I went to get on, Rogers came in. I changed my phone. Yep. Yep. I mean, and you're getting billing from them now, right? You're getting no, your. I'm on the uh, 
You're still getting source billing? Yeah, we all are. Yeah. Yeah, I'm on the, uh, I do. Now we, uh, we pay the, the, the company here 95 bucks a month. Okay. And, so and you extra, you get a bill for it. Yeah. Okay. So in fact, it's the complex yeah. that is getting the bill. We got a three year deal with it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But they're giving me a hard time because I've got a my telephone number. They want to change it. Oh, yeah. My lady, uh, I had my oh, you're, neighbor you're so to go back to Bell and have a her phone number, and she couldn't keep her old number. They wanted her to have a new number. So she, your your, your cell phone number should be portable. That's See, right. I've they, refused so far. Yeah. They're changing numbers. Like, I have um, a, a um, Mount Hope number, 679. Yeah. I explained oh, yeah. I can't have a uh, Mount Hope. That makes sense. Okay, really on a cell phone number? No, it's my landline. Yeah, line. yeah it's know. on a landline here in the village. Yeah, the, they're they're not asking they're not asking for something out of the ordinary. And but they're gonna, and they're gonna they're gonna transfer it through. I mean, I now have two telephone numbers. Yeah, they'll transfer it through till the first of April. Well, if I can't tell everybody by the first of April my new telephone number, then. It's not oh, such a big deal. My telephone number is more important than my name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in, in some in I some instances it can, is. I've just been to can, can Canadian Tire this morning. They yeah. would ask me my name. Yeah, they want your telephone number. Yeah. Yeah. My yeah. telephone number. Yeah. Yeah. I don't give them that either. I tell them yeah. all, this is my name and that's all you need to know. Needs the moment. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, there's no yeah. phone book anymore. Yeah. I have all kinds of relatives. My whole family's in the UK. Yeah. If you are, yeah, yeah. If if you're, um, if they are insisting that you have a telephone number uh, for a landline here in the village, they get to tell you what it's going to be. But I've had it for three years. Yeah. 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 They get. Yeah. They get to tell you what it's going to be. Um, I've been with for years with my old telephone. Number. Yeah. Um, now there, there is there is a portability to these numbers. Um, there are rules for it, but they should be portable, except if you're moving out of the area of like if if you're in the area of three eight three or three eight eight. Okay, if you moved to uh, Grant Avenue, they're not going to let you keep. 383 or 388, you're going to move to 527. We have 545 here. In yeah. The yeah. We do? Three three nine 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 yeah. Do you? Three three nine nine. Yeah. That's the portability of a, yeah. uh, of a number. If you insist yeah. when you're going to a new carrier that your number be portable, yes, it can be. The, the government has said so. They don't have that. Um, that hold over you as they had before. Uh, you know, I'm, go I'm thinking back now 60 years when um, um, it wasn't 38, it was Fulton. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Liberty 7. So yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. When you talked to the operator, you said Fulton. <laughs> okay. Or you said Liberty. Yeah, Jackson. Jackson or whatever it was, okay? But that's that's of no consequence anymore. Uh, my business line number is a local number for Hamilton, and it is 289-799, okay? The 289 is local area, and the 799 is also local area to Hamilton. But that's an internet telephone number. Yeah. Okay, there, there you go. That's an internet telephone number. Now, my father-in-law had um, uh, a telephone number given to him by Bell a thousand years ago when he lived on Lime Ridge Road. And that number was 389-2000. How they ever gave away that number, no one ever knows. But that number is extremely valuable. Because it's a great commercial number. Easily remembered. 389-2000. Yeah. Yeah. But they gave it to him. <laughs>
When he left Bell, they wanted the number back so they could sell it to a commercial enterprise. And he said, no. He said, that's my phone number. A thousand people know that's my phone number and I'm not changing it. I'm making it portable. And at the time, the government said, yep, you got to make his number portable. So he went to an internet telephone company and his number is 389 on, on the internet. Our numbers are portable. Yeah. Our numbers are all internet. Yep. But, but uh, there is a, they are going to make things difficult for you because they want to have, uh, like I said, um, they want to be able to say certain numbers have value, like 389-2000, that's a very important number. They can sell it for a lot of money, okay? And as long as you're saying, well, um, that portable number, I'm taking it with me, they can't do that. So they lose out the revenue and you get to keep your phone number. They say, I can go to call me tomorrow if I want. Yes. And keep that phone number. Yep. So why should I change it for Rogers' sake? Exactly so, and you can tell them that. And I'm hoping they stop calling me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think we've uh, pretty much uh, beat this to death. Um, well, if you were one of us and you were setting up which I have to, I mean I'm a source cable and you were setting up a new email, who would you go to? I would go to Gmail um, Outlook or Yahoo one of those three Yeah. I thought you liked Thunderbird Mail too. Well, Thunder, well, when I say Thunderbird Mail, Thunderbird Mail is the program. It's a program. Right. These are services we're talking about. Gmail, Yahoo, and Outlook are services. Okay. All right. And you use a program to manipulate a service. Um, just ignore me. I'll just, <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll just get my mail or something like that. When the video is up, come back to the last five minutes and listen to it over and over and over again. It will come. <laughs> okay? All right. Thank you so much, folk. That's Computer Club lesson for today. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.